Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Shapiro Feature Walkthroughs. I'm joined today by Yosef, our Shapiro VP of Product. How are you today, Yosef? Good. How are you doing? Awesome. Awesome. I'm happy to have you here. So today, Yosef will walk us through an interesting Shapiro feature, Returns Processing. Please take it away, Yosef. Thank you, Dano. Uh, so yeah, today we're going to take a look at how you process returns in Shapiro. We're going to focus on what happens when a return comes back into the warehouse. We're not going to look at how you create the returns. Uh, returns can be created a number of ways in Shapiro, including manually in the Shapiro admin, uh, using our customer self-service returns, uh, API. Uh, we also have some integrations with companies like Loop Returns and Returnly. Uh, but we're going to take a look at what happens after a return is created and you actually get the merchandise back in the warehouse. <sighs> so as you can see on my screen, I have the Shapiro returns uh, section pulled up and that's just under returns, all returns. And this is showing me the returns that have been created. Um, now you can use this to search as well. So if you have a return that comes back, you can search by the RMA number that was assigned, the order number, or even the tracking number. So if you have just a label, you can scan it and it'll find returns associated with that tracking number. To process the return, I'm gonna click into the return detail. And you can see we have all the return information here. So starting from the top, you can see the details, when the return was created, um, you can view the actual return label if you need to, you can avoid it also. And if the customer didn't get that for some reason, there is that resend label button where we can send that return email again. Uh, on the right side, you can see the actual information for the package. So the tracking number, the cost of that, that label, and the weight and dimension as well. Below that is the actual item on the return. So in this case, just one item. And it tells us how many we're expecting. So we're expecting the customer to send one back. We haven't received any, so previously received a zero. And then I could put in how many you received. Now the received quantity is just for recording purposes. That's not going to change what is actually returned. But if you want to record that you actually got the return, you can record that there. So I'll put a one there. And then mm -hmm. going over to restocked, that's how I would actually put the inventory back into my, uh, into my ship here inventory. Now, if it's damaged or you're not reselling the product, you just leave that at zero and restock won't, won't have any effect. If you are adding something back into inventory, so I'll put a one there. You can also tell us where you want to put that. Now we'll show you the bins associated with that product. So in this case, it's just one bin with that, that has that product. But if there were multiple bins with that product, we would list all of them there, you could choose, or you can search for any bin. Now one common thing we see is customers having specific bins for return. So in this case, let's say I have my return bin, let's start typing and click on that result. Uh, and I could use that to kind of stage the return. So in this example, that returns bin, is a non-sellable bin. So before I'm able to inspect it and make sure that I want to resell it, um, I put it in that non-sellable bin. And if it is good, good to resell, I would then transfer from the non-sellable bin to one of my, uh, my bins on my shelf. Right. So I set up my return. I put in how many came back um, and then I could save that. Now, one note on status, um, we have these statuses here. So uh, pending, warehouse complete and complete. Those are used just to manage your return process. So some things we see customers do is have the warehouse, get the return, inspect it, and check it, back, check it in, and then set it to warehouse complete. And that might tell someone in the office, for example, that they need to look at that and maybe issue a refund, for example. So you can create your own return statuses if you have a different workflow, uh, but these are the three default ones that we have. So in this case, you can see I put it to warehouse complete, saved it, and it's updated Updated that return. So that inventory has now gone to my return bin. You can see those previously received and previously restocked is now updated because I, I saved that return. Going down to the page a little bit, you can see we have a section for attachments. Uh, and that's great if you want to get a picture of the item, if something's damaged, you want to record that, you take that picture and attach it to the return um, so you can reference it later. Below that is a section for refund. So the refund itself, um, if we're if it's a Shopify order, we can't actually trigger that refund directly in Shopify. Um, Shopify does have the ability to actually tell us what the return should be, taking into account things like taxes. So there is a calculate Shopify refund button, uh, and that will use Shopify's API to calculate what the return, what the refund should be based on what was returned. Otherwise, you can enter in this information here to get a total total refund. So we have the product item, 
um, that or the product that was returned. Um, that's one dollar. That was the product cost. They have the option of adding the original shipping cost um, or the original label cost, depending on your policy and how you you issue refunds. Uh, we'll deduct any refunds, any return shipping cost. In this case, the return was created indicating that the customer is paying for that return label, so we're going to take that off. Uh, if you have a restocking fee, you can subtract that, uh, and then we'll just total it up to see the total refund. So once you have your total uh, refund amount, you can hit refund, and we'll issue that refund through Shopify. If it's not a Shopify order, or you issue the refund outside of ShipHero, you can just hit mark as complete, and they'll mark the the return uh, as complete. Well, that we do have a history, so anything that happened on the return, when it was returned, when it was generated, will be logged in the history. Now, one other thing to look at would be an exchange. Uh, so an exchange is something that if you're creating the return within Shapiro, you can actually create an exchange order at the same time. So if you have done that, go to that example, you'll see on the return detail page, you have a section for exchanges. So you can see this return had an exchange associated with it. And at this point, I can release the exchange, which would then allow that exchange order to go out. So by default, when you create an exchange, that's on hold essentially, and it won't go out until you release it. Um, so once that return comes back, you can release exchange, and that will allow that exchange order to go out. The rest of the process is the same. There's no refund. You can just skip that section, uh, but in terms of actually bringing the inventory back in, that's the same as we saw before. And that's it. That's a quick overview of the return process in Shapiro. Hope you learned something. Thank you very much, Yosef. That was very insightful and if you'd like to check out other feature walkthroughs click on the top right corner and if you're ready to unlock your e-commerce fulfillment superpowers visit shapiro.com to schedule a call with us thank you for watching and have a great day